FIFA official website. This is the World Cup website. It's a very colourful website, very interactive. You can register to become a member of the website to log in and to interact with other people on forums. There's lots of interviews with people who will be featured at the World Cup. Um, there are all the matches are listed in a calendar if you want to do some of the uh, some of the speaking activities I'm going to show you in a little while. Here we have all the days, times and all the matches etc. Uh, all the destination, there's a focus on each of the teams in the World Cup so you can choose which country you would like to find out more about. Perhaps your students can each do a jigsaw reading, they find out about one country, you have the latest news from that country, um, photographs, etc., and a profile of the country, how they uh, how they qualified their road to South Africa, and analysis of the team and what they what they might do during the competition. And then you'll find there are lots of other things like previous World Cups, for instance. You might want to go and uh, again another jigsaw reading, find out what happened in each of the tournaments and so for example one of your one of your groups might want to find out what happened in 1966 and so you have a, a website page dedicated to the tournament for example there are only 16 teams in those days an overview of the tournament, some photos from the tournament, a video as well uh, interesting facts etc and so there's lots to find out there in the official FIFA website. And then the final website I'd like to show is the Disky Dance, which I've been showing you. There it has its own website, Learn the Disky Dance. And there are lots of videos which will show you how to do each of the dances. Each step of the dance you'll see is to do with uh, a part of football. Uh, different moves and so you could teach your students how to dance the in dance. In South Africa we have different ways of playing football. It's rhythmic, playful, but never boring. We call it Each video is, is like one minute long, two minutes long and then they will show you how to do the dance. You'll see there are lots more links to other interesting websites and there is a competition as well. You remember Matt from YouTube now dancing the disky dance everywhere. Uh, there's a competition where uh, your students film themselves dancing the disky dance and the best dancers will win a competition. So maybe get your class all dancing together like they're showing you in the video. And that's the disky dance. Uh, one way you might like to take advantage of the podcasts in the language cast of video is by using the CAF activity packs and particularly activities like collocations in context which, if you'll remember, talks you through how to use podcasts and it has three different activities, collocations in context, who said it, in what order were they said and disappearing collocations. Some simple activities there with some variations about how to use collocations in the classroom. Now let's move on to some speaking activities they could do. One of these could be predicting what happens during the tournament. So there will be lots of uh, use of future tenses etc here and they'll be predicting and discussing different ways. They could predict the winner of every single match in the tournament. I'd suggest breaking that up over a few different lessons. Uh, the group winners, perhaps, and the runners-up. Or what happens during the knockout stages. And if they're not into football so much, you could even they could think of excuses for why they're not going to be watching games, or what they're going to be doing on that day and at that time instead of watching the football. Or discuss which games they're going to watch and choose to watch and why. Maybe give them a limit. You can only watch... 10 games during the whole tournament, which games will you watch? Uh, so one example task would be to discuss the group winners. So if we look at Group A, they say, well, you know, South Africa are the favourite, um, are the host nation, so they've got a good chance of qualifying because they're going to have the whole crowd in the stadium behind them. Mexico have been um, rather up and down form-wise, um, but they're always strong and could prove a test for both South Africa and Uruguay. Uruguay only qualified fifth in the South American group, so they're going to find it tough. And France, of course, we all know they shouldn't be there because of that famous handball by Thierry Henry. But they're there now, and you never know, they could go all the way. They did get to the final last time out, for example. So I'm going to say that from this group, I'm going to make a surprise and say that Mexico and Uruguay are going to qualify. And obviously, if you're doing this in groups, there'll be lots of speaking, and they can go through 
all eight groups maybe in diff on different days to discuss who are going to be the group winners. Once they've done that, maybe once the tournament started, you can get them to fill in the knockout stages and discuss. And so if Mexico are going to win group A, they will come here and they will play the second team in Argentina's group, which I think it would be Nigeria, say. And who's going to win between Mexico and Nigeria? Anybody's cool. I'm going to go for Nigeria. And then we have England playing maybe Germany in, in this match on the 26th of June, which I will definitely be watching. And of course, England will lose this match on penalties like they always do. And so Germany will play Nigeria and easily make their way to the semi-finals on the 7th of June, or the 6th of July even, that will be the 6th of July. Germany will play, well, who knows, we have about half of the group. So again, more interesting prediction there, lots of future tenses, conditionals could be used. So that's something to try out.